Category 3, Cyclone Garance, about to reach Reunion Island. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 28th. The last day of the month is going to bring about a fairly prominent landfall by the looks of things here with Cyclone Garance getting very close now to the island of Reunion. The Mascarene Islands as a whole being felt by this storm right now as well as Madagascar undergoing another cyclone uh, Hyundai towards the southwest. Well, in the Atlantic, hurricane season is still 93 days away, but looking across the basin right now, there's a long trail, snaking trail of cloud there from the frontal system across the central northern Atlantic Ocean. Uh, another area moving off the U.S. East Coast as well right now. Eastern Pacific has a few areas of uh, uh, disturbed weather, thunderstorms here and there, but not too much going on there in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Uh, certainly nothing that we're excited about in any way, shape or form. And the frontal system slowly trawling towards California. In the Western Pacific, there's a few thunderstorms blowing up off the coast of Mindanao, stretching northeastwards in an arc towards the uh, Mariana Islands actually, and some cloud down there over the Micronesian region too. In the North Indian Ocean, there's very little going on here as well. They're a bit of a more active intertropical convergence zone than what we've seen in previous days, certainly compared to last week. Uh, a few little areas of rain, showers and potentially thunderstorms near Sri Lanka moving out eastwards. All the action in the Southwest Indian Ocean, of course, with these two big cyclones right now. Garans big in intensity, Honda big in size off the coast of Madagascar. Uh, moving towards Australia, Bianca is gone. You can see what's left of its track there. That's where it went. And in the South Pacific, we've got Alfred, which is also strengthening Category 3 on the Sappho Simpson scale now, looking really good. Um, and we've also got Seru down there as well, which is still hanging on just a little bit longer. I think it will be gone very soon, though, to the southeast of Vanuatu. So this is Cyclone Garance right now. It is merely 142 kilometers from Saint-Denis in uh, Reunion, 155 from St. Paul, 192 from Saint-Pierre on the southern coastline, 236 from Port Louis, Mauritius, and 241 from Grand Bay, Mauritius. Now, there are uh, Class 3 warnings in effect for Mauritius and a red cyclone warning now in effect uh, for Reunion for the foreseeable future. The storm will be arriving later this morning. So let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery and this shows both of those storms in the southwest Indian Ocean quite well. Um, I would say that Garance is actually a little bit larger than it was previously and Hyundai there uh, really looking interesting. It's uh, half of a full eye and eye wall feature there and certainly has stronger winds now. We've given it Category 1 status uh, but Garance of course getting so close now to Reunion Island um, and it could collapse at any time yes but still holding Holding on to a lot of intensity. Now this is Alfred off the coast of Queensland, Australia, uh, getting much larger as well as time goes on. The eye really opening out in those latest frames too. We'll be able to compare them um, at the same resolution when we look at the 413 imagery shortly just to give you an idea of just how big that eye is I can tell you it is fairly big so first of all on the 413 website imagery which you can access yourself on our website this is uh, Garance getting close to Reunion there Mauritius on the right hand side is going to get a glancing uh, hit there by the outer bands mainly so I don't think you're going to get particularly strong winds possible sign that the eye is shriveling up there and you know we always hold our fingers crossed there for potentially this storm may be about to collapse now uh, but at this time it is still very powerful uh, eastern side will be the worst side uh, as it gets closer and closer to reunion so we're expecting winds potentially of over 160 kilometers per hour sustained or even higher than that 
and we're looking at potentially torrential rainfall which could cause flash flooding very quickly um, and could cause rainfall totals of up to or over 200 millimeters here's the latest radar imagery really shows how small this storm is though uh, when you consider that these islands are around about um, I think it's 25 to 30 kilometers in width uh, and you can see just how small the structure of this storm is in comparison uh, but it is getting closer and closer it looks like the northern side on radar was looking the best there now this is Honda which is a completely different story it's got a huge uh, sort of eye is it a complete closed eye well there's a big gap there on that eastern side it's been struggling with it the whole time but you can't ignore that south and southwesterly side which is really bulked up in the last few hours and that's been responsible primarily uh, for the storm getting stronger so tons of energy down there, uh, but obviously the northern side will be dropping uh, heavy rainfall, some strong winds, hurricane force at times along the coast of southern Madagascar, and a big chunk of that coastline there could receive some really significant rainfall. Now here's Alfred as well. Obviously that eye isn't as big as on days, but... Uh, certainly in this region it is looking quite good now um, probably the best appearance that it has had so far and that's why we're giving it category 3 status notably the JTWC actually dropped this storm's intensity I completely disagree I think it's actually getting stronger right now um, and I still think it is actually uh, pumping out intensity up higher it could get towards category 4 status Sapphire Simpson scale if it keeps going like that and this is uh, actually Seru, which is uh, just off the, the southernmost part of Vanuatu, looking very, very poor now. Um, still got a little bit of convection down to the southeast. We're giving it a tropical storm status grace period there, but I think it is going to be a remnant low very shortly. Here's the Atlantic US East Coast, uh, a line of cloud there. Uh, moving offshore shortly and this is the eastern pacific a little bit more of a close-up of a few of those tiny disturbances that are occurring uh, and not going to be doing anything western pacific uh, a better view there of the system towards mindanao which is dropping some significant rainfall locally uh, as well as another little system heading through micronesia sea surface temperatures are probably just about to start rebounding as we get towards the uh, warmer months of the year again. Uh, Caribbean looking the best of course, 26 degree ice of them, just about touching one of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Western Pacific looking pretty good still in a few spots, close to 28 to 30 degrees Celsius from Guam to Palau and possibly in parts of the Philippines as well. Southwest Indian Ocean extremely warm in a few spots around Reunion right now it is 29 degrees Celsius and for Cyclone Hyundai it is quite similar although further south there's a little bit less in terms of warmth and along the northern coast of Australia still prime area here uh, we are in peak season uh, very warm temperatures and where Alfred is right now it's around about 27 degrees maybe 20 yeah around 27 degrees possibly slightly higher at this time well, compared to average, which gives you a nice little indicator of what it is compared to normal, uh, the South Indian Ocean is on fire pretty much off the coast of Western Australia, getting up towards 4 degrees above average, been the case the whole season. Uh, the Coral Sea only a little bit above average. South Pacific as well in most of the areas that get the storms only a little above average. Western Pacific, a warm pool there in the Philippine Sea. And in the equatorial regions, you can see the eastern part near the Galapagos Islands getting really warm now, potentially the beginning of a new El Nino period. Well, this is the Western Pacific Oceanic heat content showing still substantial amounts of energy there extending from the Philippines to the Mariana Islands and a little bit beyond as a matter of fact. And in the South Pacific, a few little areas there too. Alfred not really benefiting from that particular parameter, uh, but any system forming between Vanuatu and Fiji, I reckon that would be hot property there as well as to the south of the Solomon Islands. All right, well, let's take a look at the computer models right now. This is the GFS over the next five days, taking a look at both of these storms once again in the southwest Indian Ocean. People who have been watching recently will note that not very much has actually changed, certainly not with Garance's forecast. Um, it has pretty much gone to plan. Uh, Hyundai there along the southern coast of Madagascar eventually starts to turn towards the south. Looks like Mateo France had the right idea then with the storm not doing a loop-the-loop -loop or turning around or anything like that. It does 
look like a straight movement, but very, very slow turning southwards. Now this is Alfred off the coast of Australia. Big question marks over how much will the storm impact the coast of Queensland? Well, over the last 24 hours, models have been trending away, but I still have to advise caution because ensemble models, still about 40% of those are calling for an eventual landfall, with one of those ensembles actually calling for a landfall as late as March 11th because the uncertainty is getting astronomical in the medium term that the storm might stall out for a good while over that region so keep watching that now let's take a look at the rainfall expectations over the next seven days first of all looking at both of these southwest indian ocean systems a uh, very high amount still projected in southern madagascar bearing in mind that it's already started there will already be some accumulations there an additional 18 inches on the forecast from that gfs model that is nearly 500 millimeters and over in Reunion, we're looking at just over 8 inches now, which has actually been revised upwards from previous uh, forecast models. So that's over 200 millimeters of rainfall in addition to anything that's already fallen in Reunion. In the longer range, that 20% that we've marked that's going to be moving out towards uh, Madagascar eventually, there it is towards the top left, uh, becoming a system and actually a second system, binary interaction going on almost there um, with those two systems. This is the medium range though, so we're not definitely not sure about that second one, but the first one towards the northwest, that's what we're actually giving a percentage chance to and it may try to become a hurricane equipment and it gets sucked back towards the east again, so neither of those two actually hit land. Now take a look at this uh, wacky forecast model now for Alfred because it doesn't go out quietly. Look what it is doing. It is going on and on and on and on and on and eventually it starts to trickle further southwards. We're actually going to draw the track of what it actually does in that day 5 to 10 period. It is pretty crazy doing lots of loopy uh, crazy stuff uh, and this is the parent model. Uh, ensembles are even more all over the place with many different scenarios still possible. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force of the Team merch store where you can take a look at all of our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations and a reminder this is Tropical Weather Bulletin number 998. We're so close now to our big milestone. In the Silly Range, we watch the continuation of that double system uh, continuing to move southwards while well, the second one actually wins out in the end um, and eventually uh, pulls down towards the south. Maybe a third system there forming at the very end over the central part of the Indian Ocean. It looks like it won't be going on to affect anyone. But I do have to caution everyone here, uh, ensembles in the long range are predicting an extremely active southwest Indian Ocean, so it could be this scenario that could even be another system in the Mozambique channel to watch during this period. Finally, for Alfred, what happens to it in the end on this particular model run, which after all of that stalling is now very, very uncertain by this part of the run. It hits New Zealand as a uh, extratropical cyclone, still fairly powerful and very large, moving through predominantly the South Island of New Zealand, although the North Island will also get some significant storm impacts. If this happens, I gotta say big if there, that's the 12th, 13th of March, a very long way out. Nearly two weeks. So what happened on this day in the world of storms? It was February 28th, 1964. No satellite images, at least not what we're aware of, but it was Cyclone Giselle, which was in a very similar place, actually, to where Garance is today, in a very similar intensity as well, Category 3, as it was sideswiping the island just to the north. This storm, though, was moving southwesterly and will continue towards the southern tip of Madagascar. We also had Tropical Storm Eva further east and 21 p in the coal sea and that would have been a code red on our tico score back to today we are still orange right now on february 28th uh, the first name in the atlantic this year will be andrea in the eastern pacific it's alvin and in the central pacific our next name is iona I don't think any of them will become storm number 19 of the year. Uh, in the Western Pacific, unlikely it will be here either, but the next name is Wu Tip. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name there is Shakti. 
So of course we've had a glut of names in the Southern Hemisphere, you may have lost track of where we're up to. Well, I can tell you in the Australian region, the next name now is Courtney, Southwest Indian Ocean, Yvonne, and the South Pacific, it will be Tam. Become an ultimate fan today. 